Welcome to the Berea Podcast. This is Troy. This is Della. And we're releasing this on November 7th, 2017. And this recording has been setting on the shelf for one month exactly. October 7th was a special day, A, because it was my birthday, but also because it was able to go to the Madison County Public Library's Know-It-All Festival. And very suited that that would be your birthday. Hey. You Know-It-All and all. Ha! Coincidence? I think not. Okay. But, Della, unfortunately, you were not able to go to that, right? Right. Even though it was your birthday, I was out of town on that day, so we didn't go to the Know-It-All Festival. But uh, you have shared with us some things that you learned at the festival, and you had a great conversation with the organizer of the festival. So I thought that was really good. I would have been better to have been there, but I was glad that you shared the information with Absolutely. us. Absolutely. That's actually a challenge to all of Berea. More people need to come in 2018 because it's that awesome. I'm going to share two interviews today from the Know-It-All Festival 2017, and then when we get closer to next year, I'm going to share the bulk of the interviews. So today, you're going to get an overview of what Know-It-All is, and also pizza making, and actually, there's a scoop in the interview because It's shared when something's going to open in Berea. And to my knowledge, I think we're the ones actually dropping the information bomb on Berea. Woohoo! You know, one of the things I love about, like, the Know-It-All Festival and the Learn Shops and a lot of the other things that happens around Berea, we talk about, we do this podcast because it's about things we love about Berea. I love the opportunities in our community for adult learning and for kid learning. But this idea that if you're just interested in learning this little thing about something, come on out and here's an opportunity, a whole festival dedicated to just learning, I just think that that's terrific. So that is one of the things we love about Berea. And create an environment where, as a person who did present, I don't know everything about all of this stuff, but what I do know, I freely share. And I love that. Right. I think it's, I think it's a great opportunity. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the 2017 Know-It-All Festival. Shoo! What a day, what a day. <laughs> I am here at the fifth annual Know-It-All Festival. I'm at the Berea branch, and I am actually with Athena Gentry. Are you there? Hello, everyone. They can't see you. You can't wave. <laughs> and if you wave, they won't know. But I'll verify that she waved verify at you. Verify it, yes. Good deal, good deal. Tell us a little bit about the Know-It-All Festival in concept, what it is that is an annual event, and what are you trying to put on? The Know-It-All Festival is an annual event. It's a how-to festival. So it's, it's, it's businesses, it's organizations, it's members of the public, it's members of the Madison County Public Library staff, and it, it's just people with talent that are willing to present their talent and share what they know with the public. And, uh, you know, usually we've been getting about six to 700 people per location every year and this year's been beautiful weather everyone has come out it's we've had a great uh, food truck so everyone's stuffed on fried foods we also have noodle nirvana next door and native bagel down the street and clementine so there's there's no reason at all not to have been here and not to have, have shown up you can stay all day it is an all-day so event. Yes. Everything, all these presentations, though, are designed to be 20 minutes. And then you go to the next thing, and it's just as exciting. I love that concept. Yes, and it's just to it's to kind of, uh, how I say it, is just to put the taste in your mouth on a subject that you didn't even know you wanted to know anything about before. And now you've got this you've got this taste in your mouth, and you're, you want to, to find out more about it, and you want to get involved with the presenter, and you want to get involved with that organization or that business or, or or whatever it may be. We've had two organizations, organizations, businesses come in that have met each other. Someone needed to hire someone. Someone needed a job. We put them together. They found each other. Awesome. We've had, we've had lots of great success. Um, this year alone, we've had 16 businesses, 11 organizations, 39 members of the public, and nine staff members doing presentations. So... 
that's a big deal. That's an investment in the knowledge and just the excitement of the community. Absolutely. That's that's why we love it. And to let you know further in exactly what you just said, I just led one on podcasting. And it was a couple that was here from uh, around Indianapolis that they were in Berea just to get away. And they saw all the signage and they said, that's so interesting. I want to be a part of it. They came in and they want to now start doing a podcast about their town. I thought that was really cool. So they're going to follow up with me about that's, you know, our That's experience. the magic of our how-to festival named the Know-It-All Festival is just people meeting people, people finding like interests, people learning about things that they didn't know they were interested in and, and then kapow. Absolutely. Yeah. I uh, mean, where else can you learn how, to, how Civil War shoes were made? That's true. I started my morning out by learning that how to was play amazing. the didgeridoo. <laughs> And, you know, you can't do that every day. It is, you know, right. something to look forward to right. all year long. And we saw we saw a goat today, a beautiful goat, and learned all about milking a goat and how to be a goat farmer. So any live animal is always a good time. I loved looking out the window and seeing, and seeing still now a g- group of people hula hooping. And I thought that was so fun. They're Young the real old. hula hoops, too. It's not the kind of hula hoops that, that uh, we all got from the big box store growing up. These are weighted hula hoops, so it's kind of like the professional. And um, Are there professional hula hoopers? That's a professional hula hoop. Okay, okay. How okay. about that? Well, that would suggest <laughs> that there are, I guess, you know, takes all kinds. But, you know, it's, it's a way to make you more active and to tone you up so you can use it as an mm, exercise gotcha. because it's, it's very weighted and it's a lot harder to do. For that. So, so athletic, a not necessarily It's a technique to learn. So you're not just coming in to make a hula hoop go round and round on your body. You're learning the technique awesome awesome well if people wanted next year to present or they wanted to know ahead of time how could people get contact with you or you know get information about the library yeah we start doing our our asking for presenters about february or march but anyone at any time can ask to be a presenter and they can just email the library proper or email me at athena at madisonlibrary.org or they can call the library they'll put you through to my voicemail i'll i'll get back to you we'd love to have people present the hardest thing there's so much talent there's so much talent in this county and in and around this county the hardest thing is talking people into presenting in front of other people Uh and so if they'll do it Come well, on, we'll our love little to have group, you. We, we were friends by the time we left. There that's was so what much happens. Talking. That's what right. that's what I'd like to tell people that it's it, there's a lot of people, but each each session is is quite intimate. So I agree. I agree. Thank you so much for doing this, and I'll make sure to have all Thank the you, links Joy. with the library connected Perfect. on the group Okay. All right. Thank all right. you. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Athena, for speaking with me. Right after I talked to Athena, I walked into the community room at the Berea branch of the Madison County Public Library, sat down, and in front of the room was a gentleman who had several, several to-go packs from Apollo's Pizza. He opened them up, pulled some out, and then pulled some containers of just dough ready to go, some equipment. And then taught us how to prepare pizza crust. So you're going to hear that. He makes reference to a couple of items that he uses. One is a screen. One is a docker. There'll be pictures of that over on the Berea Podcast website. So just go to the bereapodcast.com and look for the most recent episode. And the picture should be there. And this is at the end when we have the official announcement That is the scoop to Berea. So, Apollo Pizza Guy, take it away. All right. So, does anyone know what these are? No. No. These are screens, and these are skins. We take the skins, we put them in flour, that way they don't stick, and then you take your thumbs and you make the crust. That way the crust will bubble up and you have something to grab a hold of. And then after that, we kind of stretch it out a little bit. And then we take this. Does anyone know what this is? 
It's a docker. That looks like a torture device. <laughs> well, it's a docker, and what we do is we like to put holes in it. That way, when it goes through the oven at about 554 degrees, which is really hot, that it releases the moisture so it doesn't bubble up. You ever get a pizza with a big bubble? It's because it wasn't docked enough. So that's all we do. And if you ever go into one of the restaurants and you hear that loud just docking sound, it's because they're really trying to get that pizza perfect. And we like to do this thing called slapping a skin or tossing. Like you can do this, which is slapping, or you can toss it. And all it is is just to be cool. It's all it is. <laughs> really is. Like you can, I've seen people stretch it like that that don't know how to do it, but it's all for show. You can stretch it all you want as long as it fits on that. I like the, we have two separate dockers. I wasn't able to bring the other one. I was going to show you all, but I was able to bring this one. When I use this one, I like to actually stretch it a little bit at a time and dock it some more. That way I know I'm going to not have bubbles. As you can see, it's very hard to stretch this little bitty thing onto this big screen. And voila. And when we actually put the cheese and sauce on there, we take the sauce to about the, uh, you know where we pinched it? You take the sauce to about the edge of that, and then we cheese the edge of the sauce, and then we go in with it. That way, it's an even amount of cheese, and the cheese actually, if you put it on the edge where the sauce is, it, d it does this thing called anchoring. And what that does is, the cheese attaches to the crust, and then it holds everything together. You ever get a pizza and it falls all, it falls all down? That's because it wasn't properly anchored. Now who would like to do one? Anyone else want to do one? I got plenty. Come on. I'll so, try it. You want to try it? I'm an elementary school teacher. I have no chance. Hey. <laughs> so first put in the flour, right? Yeah. I need to kind of push it down in or it's just a little uh, bit enough? It's just a little bit. And then? And then you want to pinch the crust. All the way or just around the edge? Uh, around the edge. That way you can create that crust. Gotcha. Okay. I okay. forgot what's next. Okay. <laughs> just now just, just kind of pushing it down. Now you're going to kind of stretch it. So you really don't have to throw it. You could just do what she's doing now. Yeah, like just all that is is for show. It's just uh, do a little bit faster and make it look a little bit cooler. That's all it is. Do you flip it over or anything or does it matter? Uh, not really. Okay. okay. Then this thing. Then that thing. What's it called again? It's called a docker. docker. And I can like throw it between my hands, right? Yeah, you can do that. Or you can toss it. Or you can just sit there and. I think if I toss it, it'll probably land on me. <laughs> I know. I'm not very sporty. What? We have cameras. Oh, so are you saying do it or do not it. do it? Come on. go viral. Yay! Look at that. <laughs> it didn't look as pretty as when you did it, though. <laughs> it just takes practice. I've been doing this for. You can a kind while. of put a spin on it. Yeah. <laughs> I caught it. <laughs> That's fair. Place of that. Huh? Is there anything you can use in place of a doctor if you don't have one? Not really. If you ain't got no docker, you ain't got no pizza, really. <laughs> Where do you get the dockers? Uh, we actually we buy them from a company that sends us all of our equipment, like the screens, 
like our screws, they actually don't look like this when we get them. Like they're actually brand new metal, but we have to season them and put butter all over them and run them through the oven a lot to be able to make the pizza not stick to the screen. And I mean, we just, we have one company, I'm not sure of the name, but basically they just bring us a big truck, a lot of stuff, like once a week, sometimes twice. Cool. Well, I mean, I make pizzas all the time and I don't use a docker, but I really? can see the value. Oh yeah. And, and does it make a difference, like if you make a thick crust pizza, that is it more important than maybe a thin Go crust? Go uh, we actually, our thin crust comes pre-made, but I, actually I did work in a place that made thin crust. So a docker is really good for crust because it does release all the bubbles no matter if it's thin or thick. But I would... So then that doesn't have anything to do with it. I just wondered if you had more bubbles, if it was a thick crust. Oh, yes, yes. If you have a thick crust, it's definitely going to bubble more. There you go. So do you share your recipe for the crust? Uh, we do not. That is beyond me. That's that's the uh, district manager. That's that's her doing. She created the recipe, and I I've actually heard of people trying to buy it. And I actually have some pizza for everyone if they want some. <laughs> Because Richmond is so far away. Well, actually, we are opening up a store in about six months to Adams Street uh, down and down in Old Town. Yeah. So that's about six months away. So get ready. The spring, 2018. Yeah, I've never had an Apollo's pizza. Really? Well, I brought some cheese for y'all. I hope y'all like. All right. Wasn't it awesome? So I expect to see you at the Madison County Public Library, either the Bria branch or the Richmond branch. Hope to see you there in 2018. It's going to be great. I'm going to be there, even if it is on your birthday. Yes. All right. So I uh, want you to do one thing. Go over to Facebook. Our Facebook page is The Bria Podcast. Simply click on like there. That's really going to help us out. All righty. So until next week. Bye. Day is why I stay. Or the Richmond branch in 2017. Nope. 2018.